been carving for quite a few years. He does mainly trout, don't you? Yeah. And he's going to start the demonstration already. Okay, what you're going to do is it's a um, veil where you um, will put the pattern of the scales on your veil, you know, on the fish. And what you start out with is a, just a regular veil netting like this. You pass that around. <coughs> By the way, if anybody has any questions during the uh, demonstration, we have a microphone here that we pass around. Uh, so feel free to. Hey, what size is this mesh? Do you they go by size or no? Uh, you just, it doesn't it really have a size to it. You just have to go in the store and find the size you want. Oh, yeah. Because it comes in all different sizes. Oh, yeah. Okay. What size is this? Yeah, this is probably about an eighth inch. Okay. So it depends on the size of the fish uh, yeah. you're carving. Would you say that material was? I didn't quite catch that. Just a, a veil, a netting, oh, okay. nylon. Yeah, a nylon works the best because um, cotton will absorb the paint and it will run through unless you spray it with lacquer first to seal, seal it up, then it won't go through. Where but most, get? Fields Fabric. Where? Fields Fabric. Okay. It kind of looks like the scrubby pot material. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta make sure it's nylon, otherwise, like he said, uh, right, right. if you stick it to the trout, it's gonna stick permanently in there. <laughs> and what you do is you take some 3M, Super 77 adhesive. I'll do this over here. Good stuff. Give it a few coats. Let it set just a little bit. Let it get a little tacky. Now, is that something they can pick up at uh, Home Depot or? The Super 77, it's any hardware store carries it. Home Depot carries it and Menards. And now, what are you preparing there? Uh, Tom? Um, just some white paint first because I want to cover the green as much as I can with white because your pearl, silver pearl won't cover it real quick. You notice he's got the base color on the, on the trout first of all. He whited out the trout and then he uh, sprayed some uh, green over two-thirds of the fish. And uh, that's where he's going to lay his veil right on over the, uh, the green color. Mm -hmm. Then the first thing, you, before you spray it and everything, you cut a slit where it lines up on your fin. So you will, this will, the slit will go over the top of your fin. So are you going to try to cover most of the trout then? On the belly too? Is that what you're gonna do? Um, usually, just the scales fade out towards the belly. Okay. Take and set it. Push it down over the fin. We first want to make con contact is on right by the fin. Start pressing it down. Uh, 
on where your fins are sticking up. Trim it down. Turn the pump up. Ah, I didn't get enough on there. Should we pull that out and hmm? should we pull it up and spray a little more? Yeah, I don't think it'll work that way. I wonder if you can tape it in the back side there. <coughs> a little bit of tape. Got in a hurry. This technique uh, really only works with a rain or uh, trout. You really couldn't do a largemouth bass or anything like that. It just yeah. uh, it wouldn't look good. But on the trout, the trout has really small scales, so it well, seems to. Like well, I, I don't uh, think so. No. That okay. one doesn't work too well on bluegill. Uh, you stick it to the fish right now? Nah, I didn't really get enough on there. Should we pull it off and let's go ahead and uh, pull it off? Yeah, you got to make sure that uh, I guess you got to make sure that you put enough of that. Uh, I wonder if the can was shaking up enough. What do you think? Yeah, it was shaking up enough. Yeah, no, that's what I'm trying to look at. What is that blue material on the pins? Is it tape? That's just painter's tape. Tape, okay. Yeah, the reason he uses a painter tape so it doesn't lift the paint. Up when the uh, when he peels it off. A lot of times, what I do when I'm taping fins on the fish, if I don't want it to, you know, if I'm concerned about the tape peeling the paint off, I'll take it on my pants and rub the tape before I put it on there on my pants, and it takes a little bit of the glue off of it. And then I tape my fins, and it you don't stand a chance of that happening. Got a mic down there, but it isn't picking up. So. This one's not picking up. Also, we got a mic over here. Okay. Can you overdo it on the? And the glue also too, or not? Mm, not really. You're better off having more than not yeah. enough, huh? And how long do you wait between the spray and start laying down? Yeah, uh, until it gets tacky.
why you're doing this, you don't, you try to keep it so you don't stretch it out or otherwise it throws your pattern or your scales off. When you uh, lay the scale, uh, the veil in there, do you uh, do you follow a certain pattern, or, or does it matter if yeah, you turn it around or not? Try to keep the pattern straight up and down, the high diamond on it. Okay. Keep that up. Okay. And try to get it straight up and down on the fish. Uh, this would be this is white. This paint? Yeah, this white acrylic. It's gotta be airbrush paint. It's a wildlife wildlife colors acrylic. You can use about any, you know, any on it. Some people use lacquer. Use lacquer paints. No, this is this is um, comes already mixed. Yeah, with it's all pre-mixed, right here. Airbrush, airbrush ready. ready yeah. So do you try to get a solid color there, Tom? Yeah. Get some on there to let it dry, dry at first.
Does it have to be airbrushed? Uh, airbrushed. Yeah, it's just to help cover that dark green, the dark green on there. Yeah, I'm gonna put a silver on, a pearl silver on there. What type of airbrush are you using there, Tom? It's an Aztec, Aztec dual action. It's an easy airbrush to operate. You can set it, use it for a single action or a dual action if you want. What's that? What kind of airbrush do you use? Aztec. Aztec? Yeah. Okay. You put the silver right over where you have all the white. What the fish is, is on here, you have the silver down in here, and the, there's gold up on the top. It's on the green there. Now I'm going to come on with the gold on the top part of the fish. What are you putting on now? I'm going to put gold on here in just a second. You do one side and then you do the other side? Yeah. Yeah, that's this is a silver pearl that I just put on over the top of the white. Yeah. Yeah, just cleaning the airbrush out. A lot of people use Windex, and that's what's in Windex, uh, ammonia. That's what really helps. Somebody's using the straight stuff, and I believe that probably works better than the Windex. And this is Createx Gold. You can get this at about any of your um, hobby, sh hobby stores like Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, and... Um, yeah, okay. except with that stuff, you got this, you have to thin this with water. Michael has a lot of that. Hmm? Michael has a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Some of those colors, you have to thin them down a little bit. And the Createx, they seem to be a little thick. Yeah. They say they're airbrush ready, but uh, they start to plug up. When the airbrush starts to plug up, then you should add some water. It'll thin it down a little bit. Yeah, if you don't, you don't want to put a whole lot of water, it'll break down the paint. Yeah. But just a no, few just drops. No, just a little drops. bit of water, enough to... Water better than the, just as good as what they, the, the flow stuff. Yeah, sometimes yeah. your flow will, medium will plug your brush up quicker.
That is a nice airbrush to start off with. Uh, Aztec is the easiest, low maintenance. Well, the Aztec is a lot easier to clean up than the Badger. See all the, yeah. Most of those other airbrushes, you have to take them all apart to clean them up. And with the Aztec, all you do is just unscrew the tip, and they make different uh, sizes of tip mm -hmm. to match whatever you know, size of. Yeah. So, uh, so they. I, I never used the Badger, so I, I couldn't compare that. I know you can pick them up at, uh, at Hobby Lobby. Those airbrushes, you can pick them up at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, you just poke a little hole in the top so it will, has, so it will suck the fluid out. Did we lose power again? Yep. Looks like we might have lost some power. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There go. It doesn't take long for that air. Um, Airbrush paint to dry just a few seconds and that, that stuff dries almost as it's coming out. That's why your airbrushes plug up a lot. Okay, then you... Cut up along that thin. Can you reuse that then? Nah, that's pretty much it. no. Okay, then you'll have a glue residue on there. Then you take just take mineral spirits. Yeah, you think that mineral spirits would wipe that right off, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't uh, No it does. Mineral spirits is made for oil base. It doesn't hurt the, it won't hurt lacquer or won't, or um, acrylic, but you don't want to put a lot on real your rag. Hmm? Is it real dry now? Oh, it's fairly dry, yeah. yeah. <coughs> but then you, you don't want to really rub a whole lot. It will come off if you rub a whole lot. You work at it, huh? You just. Like we take and well, that turned out real nice, even evenly all the way across. Yeah. Real nice and even. Huh? Yeah. More or less, just let it dry. Now, is there a time when you really want to get that glue off? Like after no. It doesn't really get that. The mineral spirits will dissolve it, even if after it sets a while. You know, you can take and rub, you know, take some of it off and let it set a while. While then, get the rest off. Can you see the scales on there now? Yeah. Which one? 
that one. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see. You almost have to see a close up. Yeah. As soon as we're done with the program, you can come up here and uh, view it close up. It's really nice. Uh, yeah. This is just a base coat. Then you do the spots and go over with a. Um, I go over with a candy green. And you paint your stripe on. Those are some really neat colors he uses, like for the. Uh, yeah, it's the a, blue. He uses a, a, a color I wasn't familiar with. These are uh, for your stripe. I use uh, it's trout red transparent pearl, and then the blue is uh, it's called blue steel transparent, and they're um, both all um, poly transparent. Both pearl, pearl, pearl colors, but they're got a transparent in it, so you can't really overdo them. Yeah. Uh, those are a different brand of paint than what he's using here. This is the Wildlife, and then he's got the uh, Poly Transpire paints. Yeah, all of them. Would you normally put those other colors on too with the veil No. Or would you do that after? No, yeah, because these are transparent. It won't cover your, doesn't cover the veil up. Okay. And I'll put a transparent light green over the top. Okay. Your veil will always show over yeah. the, uh, under, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the paints you're going to put, you can still see the yeah. veil. All the rest will be all done with transfer. Or the scale. Yeah, that's really... Well, that concludes the program with this, folks. Thank you very much, Tom.